there's things that we could expand on, but I really don't want to. Like, it, there's a difference in like, you know, wanting to be a big company and just wanting to be a small family farm. Good. My name's Samuel. I'm here at uh, Howie Homestead. My wife is usually the face of uh, her Instagram page. Uh, she uh, started that, you know, several years ago and it became really popular. We try to be honest about homesteading, about our adventure doing so, uh, you know, kind of started out like everyone else. Uh, the gateway animal I always says the chicken. So we started with that and we've grown and we have uh, bought the sawmill a couple of years ago. And that was our introduction to Woodland Mills and it's been great. And I think uh, all in all, we've been homesteading now for pretty much 10 years now, uh, but I grew up on a farm my whole life, which is a lot of my background. Farming is a business that you are out to provide your income for your whole family. But homesteading is, uh, to me, getting back to our roots and being able to be more self-sufficient for ourselves, using, you know, growing enough meat for ourselves through, through various animals. Uh, our garden, of course, we try to provide as much food for ourselves as we can. One of the biggest goals that we have is to be good stewards of the land that God's given us. Uh, and we try to do that through regenerative uh, agricultural practices. You know, we back to Eden Garden, uh, forest management. It's, I'm not going out here and clear cutting our forest. You can see in the background. Uh, we try to just use unhealthy trees or trees that are overcrowded. Then, of course, if we have anything extra, we, uh, we can sell it at farmer's market and whatnot. But our main goal is not to make an income off of what we do here. It is to provide for our family. That to me is what homesteading is. I got the HM130 Max. Uh, it's got the trailer with it and I bought the extension so it, it'll handle almost a 17 foot log. We got that back in, I think I put the order in in 2022. Bought this property here, which we have 23 and a half acres. Uh, a lot of it's wooded and we have at that time we had four children now we're up to five <laughs> and so the goal was to um, add a garage and um, i was going to mill a lot of our own lumber because we live in a cabin i don't know if you can see that it's a an old wood cabin so i was like we could buy a sawmill and provide a lot of our lumber also at that time during the global pandemic lumber prices skyrocketed so it was uh, very economical to buy the sawmill and justify uh, all of our projects as well uh, just our fencing projects because any homestead anytime anytime you have animals you're going to have a fence so we've used it to, to make fence posts as well and it's easily paid for itself just in fence posts alone <laughs> one of my favorites is i made our uh, smoker a smokehouse it's uh, it's probably big enough to hold half a pig in it if you wanted and i, I milled the the cedar lumber. Uh, I've used all red cedar. Uh, a lot of people know it as juniper so that it doesn't rot as quickly. But this is the smoking box where all the meat goes and gets hung. And then down at the bottom here is the fire box. So then it travels up the chimney and into there and heats and cooks our food. That's probably my favorite project I've made. <laughs> Obviously the ch mobile chicken coop's a big one. Any kind of chicken tractor I've done, fencing, uh, barn work, uh, that's been the majority of, of our projects. I have not cut down a tree for milling purposes. Uh, the wind blows them over, rain, you know, uproots some trees and instead of it just laying there and rotting, then we, uh, we get them and I mill and make lumber out of it and very little goes to waste. The second purchase I bought, was the, uh, but I bought a Woodland Mills wood chipper and so that we could chip any of the limbs or any of the, the scrap from that. And we put that on the garden so that it decomposes and just provides nutrients for our, for our garden. Our products, like what we grow here, not so much about making money, but we do take that experience and try to provide that to others uh, through, my wife makes a lot of uh, consumables. Uh, elderberry syrup's one of them, which is, good for your immune system. We, we have goats, so she makes goat's milk caramels and, and ships everywhere. Goat milk soaps as well. All sorts of things with that. And then on my side of it, I don't make so much as those sorts of products, but I do take what's in here and I try to make uh, buildable plans uh, that anyone can follow. So to help them out on their, on their homestead. 
Uh, I know a lot of people that get into homesteading, maybe mechanical thinking or, or building isn't natural or they've not done it much. So I try to give the concepts that I've grown up with or where I've come up with and make it into an, an easy downloadable PDF uh, so that anyone, like I said, anyone can build it and follow. For example, I have a uh, goat hay feeder, goat mineral feeders. Uh, we're gonna, my wife's coming now. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, I oh. was, oh, I'm sorry. So this is Courtney. This is the face of Highway Homestead. I'm just usually the, the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy doing our other side hustle, uh, making goat milk caramels. I did share on, I've shared kind of glimpses on our stories. I kind of share as he's going through um, making it because it does take us quite a bit of time um, <laughs> because he has to meal all his all lumber and all that. So it does take time, but um, I do try to share snippets as he gets uh, things done in my stories on Instagram. I, I do a lot on Instagram. I don't do as much as I did before because we do have five kids now and the homestead just gets that much busier. Not only the kids, but as the kids grow, they eat more. So we're trying to preserve <laughs> and do more. So I'm canning more. We have more goats than we ever have. Um, more chickens than we probably ever have. Our incubators run nonstop. He's ready for those to end. Yes. <laughs> Social media is a necessary evil yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, it does it definitely connects us to customers that we normally wouldn't have true like here in our little circle of you know knoxville tennessee you would be very limited to your to your farmer's market whereas when you get on social media your outreach is unlimited it's true um, so i have caramels i'm shipping this week yeah. so i have caramel shipping but i also have the farmer's market here so it's kind of we, we have we wear many hats yeah we wear many hats and we so have i know uh one of my plans, the cow stanchion, it is uh, very organic. People will get random purchases from that that's never interacted with us at all mm -hmm. because. Um, and that's not social media. It's not coming from Instagram. No, Those it's just are, coming from like a people Google People are search. Googling for, you know, a cow stanchion plan right. and then it but just it, all But it all started sudden. from social media because mm -hmm. somebody bought it, somebody shared it, and then it just gains traction. So yes. it, it does play a big role. Uh, it is exhausting, especially for her, because uh, <laughs> social media is one of those things that seems to, you have to give it all or nothing. <laughs> you have to feed the algorithm, yeah. and that's just what it is. There's no other way around it. If you're not feeding that algorithm, then it's not suggesting you more than likely. So I guess that's, and, and feeding it as much as I feed my children <laughs> is a balance, if that makes sense. I mean, it does bring us so much. Like I said, we have the online sales the farmer's market we have local stores that i work with as well i have local stores and so like it's a necessary thing because it's not even with me having all these different income type things we don't make killer money <laughs> like there's no there's really no money to be made as far as that's all that the goal is for it to sustain itself yeah it, it helps us break even with the homestead basically where we're at so it helps us Pay the feed bill is and what I always say. Yeah, and that's where social media helps in with recurring income. Those plans for, for sure. And once I Absolutely. once I once I actually sit down and, and make those plans, you know, that's there. And so if somebody again organically comes and buys it, then it, that's just a nice little little bump. You know, and and I think about ever if we wanted to expand because there's things that we could expand on, but I really don't want to. Like it, there's a difference in like you know, wanting to be a big company and just wanting to be a small family farm. That's, that's my whole goal. Like if we handed something to our children that they were interested in, that would be great. But if we don't and they don't want it, that's fine too. Others. Well, you have all the designs. He's, he is continually adding, you've added several things this year, the brooder, the hay feeders. Um, the hay feeders. You have salves. Herbal salves that I use on anything from our animals to us. <laughs> and I have some garden stake markers that we do. That he uh, does at work. Yeah. yeah. They have a laser. Yeah, we it's have a, a metal. laser. So they're metal. Yeah, they're metal. What else do we have? You have lip balm. <laughs> I, I, oh, elderberry syrup. That's yeah. huge. Elderberry syrup. And elderberry so, syrup kits. Yeah, we just have a lot of things. <laughs> 
That's I, why the social media kind of gets the back burner sometimes. Because, yeah. you know, if I have orders already, I can't be advertising <laughs> for more because I can't keep up with it. Also made these little slide lockers here on it and the hinge or the clasp, I guess you would call it. And all of these joints are uh, shiplapped. I used a router to make shiplap joints. A lot of them, especially like I said, the cow stanchion, all of that lumber, is, it can be rough cut. It doesn't have to be finished lumber. Um, so I would, like if I were to build it today, I would use my sawmill for, I think, almost every plant well, I have on there. And when you made these, so so we'll be honest, we're very frugal and very, um, <laughs> we're hoarders. Um, and so like, if we had a piece of wood laying around or something, we he definitely used that because we didn't have the sawmill when we were building these things, some of them. And so um, he would just use what was available. But even when he made his plans, you made them so that they could be interchangeable with like normal things people could go buy from a lumber store yeah. or cut like regular sizes yeah. from the sawmill. You made it both ways. Exactly. It's not, it doesn't have to be finished lumber and it doesn't have to be rough cut. It could be either. But yeah, anything that I have on there, uh, it could be made with, with rough cut lumber that from the sawmill. She's <laughs> wanting me to make the, the plans for the the smoker and the plans for the mobile chicken coop obviously again we try not to over pasture anything um, and that includes our chickens it didn't start that way we have a chicken coop actually down down the road a little bit but uh, in the holler as yeah. we'd say here in East Tennessee yeah. so we were like oh, we would like to uh, make a, a bigger chicken coop permanent chicken coop for the, our egg layers but and enough I, to hold all my chickens yeah so it has to be like yeah, and I try to, yeah, exactly. So I try to be, try to give them all, you know, a couple of square feet each if they were to be cooped up all the time, which they wouldn't be. They're at all. never, they're never cooped up. Um, we had a boat trailer on this property when we moved in, and I said my original plan was to make it into a little wagon to pull behind me in the woods, and you know, when I cut down or go cut wood or whatever, I could, I could use it. I told him I needed a chicken coop. So, so that's what it became. <laughs> uh, so I milled uh, all the lumber and built this mobile chicken coop on top of a boat trailer and it's uh roughly 10 feet by 12 feet long and we call it our our chicken church oh, because uh, so our kids are calling it the chicken church or the ch chicken church yeah, yeah that's the chicken, right. church. The chicken church because it's painted white it's painted and white. we have some older uh chapels in the area that are painted white and so they always say you know that looks like a chicken church so now it's our chicken church so it'll probably be called that on our website <laughs> so any advice i have is it's going to be hard work you need to stick with it and then of course don't be afraid to be creative uh, these plans were kind of just we're like oh i we have an issue that comes up and then you have to come up with a solution and, and i say fix it <laughs> <laughs> and so it's kind of like capitalizing on those things that maybe wouldn't have been in your life otherwise uh, so definitely think outside of the box and be willing to adapt to that and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try new things. We have a few plans on there that I don't know if we've ever sold anything, but they're there. If they yeah. ever sell, then they're there. Right. That's true. Well, and I want to add to like, if anyone, like I, I'm always very hesitant to like, we don't, we don't spend money very much. Like I said, we're very frugal people, especially <laughs> buying like a new piece of machinery. Like he would buy all the machinery and have all <laughs> the things, but I'm like, I don't know, are we going to, like, is this going to be worth it in the long run, like financially? That, that's where my mind is. And if people are thinking about buying a sawmill, especially a woodland mill sawmill, it pays for itself. Like, I mean, there are so many projects we've done, like, I just jump in and buy it, like, because it, it has been so worth it. Especially, I mean, even looking at the long game, like, or the short game, like, we, I think it paid for itself in the first That's year that we had it. Posts. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, we have used it and it has been so worth it for us that I would just say, do it, jump in, buy the sawmill, do the homestead, but know why you want to do this and don't forget your why.